Dugalic or Betts. It'll be on Dugalic. That is her third. Betts stays, and Reese goes to the line. Really nice job on the pick and roll, getting it to Reese. Did anyone touch her? I don't think so. Let's see. Nate catches her with a left hand coming back. And so Reese, four or five from the line today, 73% on the season. Ties the game. Sixty-seven all. LSU 15 of 20 from the strike. Reese hits them both. LSU back in front. 145 to go. Here's Rice. Rice drives it, gets denied. Flaugé Johnson on the block, and then Rice on the foul. Outstanding defense. Outstanding defense by Flaugé Johnson. And then the foul from Rice is not only her fourth, it's the team's fifth. So it will put LSU at the line as you saw the animated reaction of Corey Close. So here is Johnson hitting the first. Well, you talked about the command and control down the stretch tight moments. That also applies to the free throw line and being able to handle these moments. Reese and Johnson returning national champions hitting their free throws thus far and again. Roger Johnson has just played with a real maturity this entire game. Three point LSU lead. Here's Osborne turning the corner. Rice on the attack. Rice can't spin it in. Johnson then steps out of bounds on the rebound. And it's going to be UCLA basketball. New life on this possession for the Bruins. Oh, you wonder if Jaquez could have been called for a foul with the foot. And if that's what forced Johnson out of bounds. But they can't review for that. So it's just UCLA basketball here. And the officials are going to check on the clock. And UCLA gets a new shot clock because Johnson had possession off that rebound before going out. Here's Rice. Has to get it in. Could call a timeout. Doesn't. Jaquez on the drive. Misses the layup. Betts is there. Fouled by, I believe, Reese. No. They will say it's on Morrow. Angel Reese was ready to depart, but it's number four on Morrow instead. UCLA has been insistent on having their guards drive the last few possessions, and until here, it's been fruitless. So Morrow on the elbow, because Reese was clean on the ball. And Rebecca, what you want to see instead is post-entry passes to Betts. A little bit more deliberate, yeah. It looks like they're trying to get to the free throw line. And, and like Kiki Rice, the last time after she got her shot blocked, it looks like she was looking for the foul even more than looking to finish. Here's Betts at the line, knocking down the first. Playing through Betts has been a pretty solid recipe for success for UCLA today. As mom Michelle knows well. Her daughter has shined on this stage. This is the second Reese the rebound, her 11th of the day. LSU with the basketball, leading by two. Neither team is led by more than three at any point in this fourth quarter. Reese flashes, waits. Reese putting it on the deck, gets denied by Betts. Another chance here for LSU. Shot clock at five. Johnson lays it in. Flaugé Johnson to the rescue. 
LSU by four, and that's going to be an offensive foul. And number five on Kiki Rice. UCLA's best offense today has not been this, just trying to overpower LSU's guards, and you see Rice certainly pushes off <laughs> Kim Mulkey, pushing off the invisible beast as well. Angel Reese getting the crowd into it as Rice fouls out. 72-68, LSU leading UCLA. Rebecca, one of the things that Angel Reese talked to us about yesterday was feeling the weight of expectations this season. She said last year, as we went on to our championship, no one had been expecting that. So we played freely, played light. This year, we feel those expectations, so it's a different challenge. But tense moments down the stretch here, and she and Flage Johnson, the players who did it last year, have answered the bell. Well, think about it. They've also gotten used to playing with the weight of those expectations. So here in a sweet 16 game in a sold out arena, it's a moment that they can be a little more comfortable with. And Flaugé Johnson, man, every single time they've needed her to make the right decision she has and to finish and to do things on the defensive end as well. Angel Reese telling the crowd, yeah, get into it. And this LSU program with a massive following here in Albany, a massive following around the nation. And they are 39 seconds away from heading to the Elite Eight where they will meet either Iowa or Colorado. That game up next. And Rebecca, UCLA led this game 67-64 with 2.46 to go. But Kim Mulkey's LSU team on an 8-1 run since. And Sir. that was LSU's final timeout. LSU with the basketball, about a nine-second difference game in shot clock. So how do you play this defensively if you're UCLA? You foul, and Van Lith is going to go to the line. Van Lith, one of eight from the floor, one of two from the strike. You know, when these regions came out, many had an eye towards a potential rematch between LSU and Iowa. LSU 36 seconds away from punching their ticket to the Elite Eight. Colorado stands in the way of Iowa next. Still time for UCLA as Van Lip hits both. And the lead is six for LSU, UCLA timeout. Ellie Van Lith's dad gives the fist bump. UCLA with one timeout remaining. Both teams in the bonus. LSU on a 10-1 run here, and they have hit their free throws down the stretch. So important here for UCLA on the offensive end to get something quick. It doesn't have to be a three, it can be a two, but you need to let as little time as possible run off this clock. UCLA on the day, seven of 29 from deep, but they started this game one for 16. They do not have Kiki Rice, who would have been one of the options from three in this situation. Haquez, Dugalic, Osborne, Jones, and Betts. The five on the floor for UCLA. Here is Dugalic. Osborne finds Betts, deep catch, and a foul on Reese. And that is going to be her fifth. So Angel Reese fouls out. And Betts will shoot two free throws. Corey Close's 
furious because Angel Reese said something to her and the bench as she was walking by. And you see Corey Close now talking to the official about it. And Corey Close, one of the things she talked about to us before the game is taunting and saying she would put that bug in the officials ears about taunting and the difference between celebrating reacting versus taunting but no whistle there has close upset bets meanwhile misses the second free throw again loose ball though and we can have a foul or a help ball Should it be will foul. be a foul yes and so flage johnson will go to the line to shoot two yeah, as soon as Flage, it's clear that she has possession. You have to follow her there and credit her for handling it well. She stands up quickly and then just walks to the end of the floor. Flage, 7 of 8 from the line today. 23 points. You talked about just the poise she has played with all game. And hits another free throw. Angel Reese fouled out. She's had to navigate foul trouble throughout this game. But another double-double for her as Johnson misses the second free throw. Still a game here. Osborne. Trying to find an angle. Jones will fire a three. Can't hit. Dugalich gets blocked from behind by Johnson. LSU has it, and that should just about do it with 12.7 to go. Johnson, another block. Block, steals, big buckets, big free throws. Huge game for Johnson. Anissa Moore with a big game as well. Misses the first free throw. We said it at the half, though. Flaugé Johnson was the best player on the floor, and that's how this game is going to end as well. She has been the best player on the floor. About 12 rebounds for the point guard to go with her 24 points as Morrow makes the second free throw. Timeout taken by UCLA, their final timeout. And time now for our Capital One rewarding performance. The returning champions from the starting lineup, Flaugé Johnson and Angel Reese. Just incredibly impactful performances by both young women and Flaugé Johnson from the beginning of this game. Hitting threes, getting inside, defending as well. And Angel Reese just doing what Angel Reese does. And that's be relentless on the glass, relentless in the paint, showing emotion, leading our team. 16 points, 11 rebounds for Reese. 24 points, 12 rebounds for Johnson. Reese has fouled out. Iowa, Colorado coming up next here on ABC. The winner of that game will play the winner of this game Monday night on ESPN. Jones was open. Instead, it's Dugalich in the corner. No. Rebound Van Lith. Van Lith escapes, and a foul is given with 6.6 .6 to go in this fourth quarter. Flage Johnson asking for the crowd. And receiving it. <laughs> Saying, wait, I need a little. Okay, that's good. It's like she's in the studio and asking for a little more something, something. All right, we're good now. I need a little more base in the headset. Exactly right. Yeah. Come on, I need a. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah no, that's it. That's <laughs> it. All right. Van Lith hits both. Osborne will take it across. Dugalich is three. The defending champs are not done yet. LSU is headed to the Elite Eight. 
78-69 the final as the Tiger Tigers advance to the 10th Elite Eight in program history. And UCLA, who had a lead with under three minutes to go, falls short as LSU finishes this game on a 14-2 run. LSU just with great experience and toughness in the moment. And we know they've dealt with a lot all season long, been able to overcome adversity time and again and in a game, within a game, the adversity that you face. The fourth quarter was terrific for Ajay Johnson the entire game, just leading the way for LSU. Big hug from Lauren Betts and a 